1942 motorbike but it's got 1947 tanks on it so we've got the 1942 to 46 wiring loom but the setup here is different on a 47 loom the wires are a different colour and the switch is the other way up so basically just working out what wires go where and then we'll put the lights on the sidecar wheel um, probably won't get round to lighting it all up this morning but um, we'll get there but basically that's it just working out the wiring loom so you can trace it back through your different diagrams so you know what's what okay so on your WLA's on your small 750's your two wiring contacts there are under the frame they're there which they should be here but what most people do is yes put the spark plug wires through them so you've got a wire there and a wire there that should be what their contact points yeah. insulated contact points but on the big tweens they're under the seat there you've got main ignition feed and you've got your lighting feed so the difference basically the looms are all the same but on a 47 they're different coloured wires okay so it all goes up here does exactly the same thing but Harley Davidson wiring diagrams being as they are are a pain in the butt generator battery ignition horn generator and oiling system signal lamps and stop lamps on a 1947 model because so we've got that dash panel instead of that dash panel yeah see that's got the three terminals on a switch at the top mm -hmm. that one's got the three terminals on a switch at the bottom so that isn't a full wiring diagram so you do what you got on here then you have to go to this page which gives you the lighting system so that's with a voltage regulator so we don't need that one so basically we've got to wire that lot and then cross over the page and wire this lot so i've got halfway through because it's got different lighting systems that wire there is just a terminal post you could just join that white wire to that one which is your generator lamp but you might as well do it right so i've made the insulated terminals in there right so that one we'll have to extend that one goes onto there and then your oil feed wire which i think is that one has got to join to that one so it's a, it's a little bit complicated but if you follow the diagram through then you know where everything should be wired up to yeah Right, so we only need to go to that terminal there. That one will reach. So we just need a little bit of wire to extend that, that's all. We only needed a little bit, so that'll do us there. That's that, that's that one linked over. Power in. So we've got to put another terminal on that. And that's power into the oil lamp. Right, so it doesn't matter which way round you go, that one reaches that. So now, oil lamp. So that one, let's make sure that that's on. Yep, yeah, it's definitely that wire. So we've got to join that to that. So we've got that wire, and we want to go to that wire. So the first thing to do is make sure that every wire's got a contactor on it, or connector. Yeah, well obviously I've got to change some of this because of the uh, nature of what we're doing with the wiring, you know. 
you want to make sure everything's insulated because if obviously that's a live wire mm. you don't want it to touch on anything so we've got that one got plenty of links on him so that's quite handy And all these parts, just generic parts that... Yeah, this is just a wiring kit. You buy a box of the ends, the right pliers. Yeah. So a one type of connector is no better or worse than the next? These are pretty good. What ones are these? Uh, they're just... Uh, the, it's more of a Japanese set, to be honest with you, okay. than, a, than a sort of English one. We, you know, your English stuff is bullets, what they call Lucar connectors. Yeah. Your Yankee stuff did do some stuff like that, but not much. Um, yeah, it's just all different types of connectors, you know. We know then that that... See that there's nicely insulated. Okay. So then you slide that one. Fiddling around over the top of that one. Yeah, so none of that can short out. Yeah. So that's your ideal scenario for that. Right, so that's all of that wired up. We've got one wire left here, which has got to be that wire there, which will be lighting. Let's just check it. Right, so that should be lighting. Yep, that's lighting. So now we have done all of that so what should that be then let's have a looky see that's got four wires we've only got three wires all oh, right it's the horn feed okay so that should be green i believe on a normal wiring loom green yep that one okay so we'll have to change the terminal on that for a bigger one and what they've done, instead of having like on a WLA military, you've got a seven position switch. These are five position switches, but obviously the looms are made as a generic loom for everything, yeah? Yeah. But sometimes you have to change your end pieces and play around with them a bit, you know? So this is one kind of, one standard wiring loom that you adapt put for whatever bike you want? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I don't generally worry about tidying everything up and tucking it all away until I know it all works. Oh yeah. Right, so red and white is your headlamp feed wire. So we'll probably have to swap page now because see none of the headlamps are shown on this diagram. So there's your wiring for the headlamps. So we need to go to junction 17. See that one shows one set of switches, that one shows two sets of switches, mm -hmm. so that's for spot lamps and all the rest of it, yeah? So we need to go to position green, position two, okay? Black to junction 16, green, red. Got to make sure none of the terminals are touching anything else. Right. Let's get a test light. Stick a battery in there and see what's happening. Right. We've got f all. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've got a headlamp. We've got a headlamp, yeah. Right, okay. Let's start at basics. This is actually quite interesting. So, what's your process of diagnosis? Check it bit for bit. So, you know you're getting flow from the battery, yeah? Yeah. None of our wires are getting hot. We had no sparks or anything when we put the terminals on. So, we know we're not shorting out somewhere. Yeah. Um, so, now it's just a matter of going through. I. Is there, a, is there an order you do it in at all? Well, you check to your terminal post there. Then you know that your live from there goes to there, so you check that. And how do you check it? 
do a test lamp. Okay. Chances are I've wired it up wrong. Yeah. So you just got to eliminate it bit for bit, you know. Okay. So we know we've got a good earth. Right, to the battery, we've got power, yeah? Now that battery wire goes to here. So we've got power there, yeah? Yeah. So that should go up to this one. So we've got power there. Yeah. That goes down to the regulator there. And we've got power there. So that's right. So when you turn a switch, it should power that up, which it isn't. Yeah? Okay. So I've done something wrong there. So could it be the switch or could it is could it be it's either the switch or the wiring? No, it'll be the wiring, I would have thought. I've wired something up wrong somewhere. And then when you turn that you should get power. That's your lighting, yeah? What do you have? Okay. So I've wired up this wrong somehow. Or it's touching? Could it be? No, because you'd know straight away you'd get a hot wire or it's short or something. Okay, yeah. Trouble when the wires change colour and such. So number six, I've forgotten to put a wire in because there's not four wires going to that. There's five, so I'm definitely going to have to put a longer bit of wire, a longer bolt through there. It'll be that one out of the wiring loom kit then. Ah, uh, that's what it's for, huh? Because that terminal post that I put in there. See, that's half the battle. I'm not used to doing a big twin at all. This terminal post feeds everything, right? Which it doesn't on a on a WLA. It just um... right. So now, in theory, if I put that on there, and then your dash lights work. Okay. So that is what was missing there. But I'm gonna have to take this apart and change that bolt. So let's not worry about those two charge lights. One's One's oil, one's generator, and you can't tell until you fired it up whether they're going to go out or not, yeah? Okay. But it means all that lot's wired up right now. So we can take that off. And let's check our lighting system. So we should have black, which we've got. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Red will be dead, but we should have power to the brake light switch. Right, so we've got no power to the brake light switch, okay. Which is, what we got? Green should come from the coil. Right, so we've got no power to the coil. Right, because it needs that on there, I think. Yeah. Okay, so power to the coil. Right, that's all okay. All I've got to do now is wire in the marker lamp on the front I think that's right wired that way they use that as a parking lamp but you can wire it in to that one yeah you can wire it into that one and that will feed all your side lamps and everything as well then Not dulling off, is it? No, she's got no resistance there. Okay. So now I've put a longer bolt through there, change that. Wire up my marker lamp. Because these these lamps you see, they weren't ever used as a running lamp. Okay. It's what you call a parking lamp. So you literally park your bike up at night and leave it on. It's one of them. But a lot of people don't ride them with it. They want it on all the time. Um, your sidecar is wired up differently. I'm not sure. So we've just got sidecar wiring in here. So that parking light will stay on permanently? If you turn the switch to the left instead of to the right. And how much amperage would that drain from the battery? Enough to be a pain in the bum, yeah. Really? So we've got to pick another wire up off the brake light switch to feed your side lamps and your normal running lamp on the sidecar wheel. Then you pick another wire up from your brake light switch to go all the way back over to the brake light on the back there. They've got a joined up one on that. That's a later 47. So we'll go with that one, it's easier. Okay. 
Mudguard Lamp, Black Wire from Switch to Terminal 3. Now, I think we'll just wire it. I'll ask Alex when he comes here. But normally you wire them up so they're on all the time. Your sidecars are different. I mean, that, that's like I say, literally you just click it one position to the left if you're leaving it out in the middle of the road or something, you know? Mm -hmm. Right, so that's where the original marker lamp was. This thing's got holes all over the place, which I spoke to the customer about. Well, he's going to clean these up and put grommets in. But he wants the lights in the right place, yeah? So I've scaled off on my drawings. So he goes there. So what I'll do is clean that up first. Let's get some of that off of there. Just a little bit of tea cut. I'm not worried about polishing it, polishing it. I just want to get the worst marks off, you know? Yeah. Got the worst of that off. You're never going to get rid of all of it because it's been out of lamp on there for God knows how long, you know. Right, let's see what's going to fit with this. So again, being reproduction, never going to fit properly, so you just have to do it up. Just want to check that actually. Hold on. So how do you how do you get rid of that? Is it padding it out? Or? No. What we can do is do it up and try and bend it into shape. Okay. It's about all you'll do with them. Because whatever you do, it will look wrong anyway. Okay, so we've got to make sure when it goes through that hole there, that brass isn't touching anywhere on that because it'll just short the bulb out, yeah? Oh, of course, yeah. That looks pretty good. I think we'll be okay with that. Right, now, let's make sure that fits that. Yeah. Right, so the back rubber isn't sitting right, so we want to try and pull the back down first. That's not bad actually. Right, so let's nip it down. Put the front on so it doesn't lift out. Right, now we've got to flip it over and see what's going on with the wiring. Okay, so that isn't touching anything, so we need to extend that wire there, put a terminal on it.
Should be knuckles. <laughs> it's them, was it? Yeah. Okay. Right, looks like an M5. Let's find a little bolt for that. Sure, it is an M5. M4, I think. Well, unless they've done it, um, Imperial Thread, but I doubt it very much being a repri part. Mm, blimey. Mm. It's not metric. All right, we'll leave that for a minute because that's going to be me searching for crap everywhere. We'll just get our backlight on. Decided. It's got to go there. Oh, that should be good for a centre line. And we wanted to go there. And that gives us the same dimension as the other one. Okay. So that's covered that. That's covered that. Uh, wiring can go through those, so let's drill a hole in there. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Okay. Right. Looks good. generally got enough room behind these not to worry about where you tuck the wires so right again these don't really fit you know. well it's definitely more central than the other light was okay but the beauty of having the wheels off at the moment, because obviously you've got to get the tyres changed, is I can just um we ain't got two of them, have we? You bastards. So you were right in the middle of saying the beauty of having the wheels off. Oh the wheels off, I can reach up under the mud guards and play around with all the wiring, you know, get it all tied up nice and neat out of the way. Yeah. Um yeah, it's all good. Right. Yeah, that's a lot better on the back end, isn't it? 